I'm just going to start back in with some more of this yellow oxide paint and I'm going to be printing I'll show you a couple of techniques for putting patterns simple patterns which give I think really nice results into your work so again just those short short movements trying to make sure that there's plenty of ink uh, or in this case paint on the fabric and again just rolling it off on my spare piece of fabric there now what I'm going to do is take some novelty yarn which I have here and I'm just going to let that drop or sort of vaguely arrange it across the plate and what will happen is when I go and print the plate these will act as a resist which means that the paint won't get picked up where the yarn is so I've got another piece of fabric I printed a few days ago as you can see I didn't get really excellent coverage on this so I'm really happy to give this a go and see if this will help make it a more interesting pattern so again carefully just putting your fabric down on the plate and smoothing with your hands now you can see already there are lumps here so that's the yarn underneath so after I've got an initial pressing down I like to make sure that I go around those yarn lumps yarn lumps and make sure that I get as good a contact as possible between the plate and my piece of fabric that I'm printing onto. Uh, it'll be interesting to see as this is a transparent color I haven't used this before I can see already that some of the paint is already coming through onto the back of this piece of fabric uh, this actually happens to be a piece of recycled sheet so you can use all sorts of things but again one of the things I noticed with this sheet was this has actually got a much rougher surface on one side than the other so I'm printing on the reverse side which is the smoother side I'm just going to see what we've got yes we have already got some very interesting patterns on our fabric having used that yellow not a strong contrast but I actually quite like some of these more muted contrasts between the two so again I'm going to put this over to dry and I'll come back with another piece of fabric now I know I said I was going to show you fabric but I'm just for the sake of convenience going to take off what we call the ghost print using a piece of paper because I think it's the only thing I have which is going to show that up quite nicely so I'm going to just pull off the pieces of yarn put them up out of the way and you can probably see little bits of pattern left on the print left on the plate I should say where the print is now I really don't know how well this is going to um, print off I've just literally grabbed a sheet of um, paper out of the recycling bin and I'm not having great expectations but I thought it'd be interesting to see if I can get a print it will also help me clean the plate so this doesn't quite cover the plate as well as I would like but that's okay this is just really to clean the plate and see if we can get a ghost print so that I can show you what that turns out like so our really boring piece of paper has suddenly got all these interesting textures on it and I might also just come down to the bottom here and tidy up that last little bit you can still see there's traces of paint on here it's not really a big issue at this stage so there, there we go a ghost print now again if I didn't think this was anything shattering I could print over it it'd be fine
I'm now going to take my um, transparent red oxide and put some of that on the plate and I'm going to go through the same process of doing a print and then a ghost print using this transparent red oxide. I'm looking at it and just wondering whether the colour is going to be strong enough but we'll um, soon see. I've certainly got a lot. I might have a bit too much on the plate even for fabric but we will just see what we can do. If I had this much ink on my normal paper printing plate, I would know it's too much ink. Uh, but as I said, with the fabric painting, it's a slightly different requirement just because the fabric absorbs so much of that paper. So again, I'm going to just grab those pieces of novelty yarn. I'm not really worried about um, how they lay down. I think it is nice sometimes if I'm doing something like this to make sure that some of it goes to the edge. I don't really want it all clustered in the middle. And uh, yeah, not really worrying too much about the arrangement. I'm just bringing back that second piece of fabric that I printed the background on. It's not completely dry. It's not really a big issue with these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again just slowly place this on the plate, drop it down and sort of smush it down with my hands. One thing I will say, you do need to be a bit careful when you do this because I've discovered if you just put your hand down like that, you can end up getting a handprint, which is great if that's what you actually want to achieve, but it may not be quite the look you're after. So again, you can see now quite nicely how the paint is being absorbed around that novelty yarn and onto this piece of cloth. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's coming and I'm really pushing down hard on the fabric to make sure that I get the best colour transfer that I possibly can through this process. I think that's looking pretty good. As I said, you can see really clearly on this one where that novelty yarn is underneath. And let's peel it off and have a look. It's got a lovely clear print. And I always like these because it reminds me of meandering rivers. Again, I'm just going to pull that novelty yarn off. Get it out of the road. And I'm going to print this time on that other piece of fabric I had, the bit of bed sheeting, and I'll just see how this turns out. So again, just carefully putting that on and letting it flop onto the plate and then just smoothing it down. And I think you can already see in these places, you can actually see where the patterning was. So this will be the third layer of print on top of this piece of sheeting and it's interesting because frankly if it takes that many layers of print to get something you're happy with then I don't think it's a problem it's a bit more subtle again seems we've only just got the ghost print there's a few bits of color but not as much ink as I would have liked and I think if I'd been using an opaque ink I would have got a better print off that I just also too want to just smear that out. I don't really want lumps of paint on the side of that print. But we'll see how that goes when it dries. I really think that that um, transparent paint is not doing the job I want it to do. So I've literally just reached into my box and pulled out. This is just some Montmartre acrylic. Fairly inexpensive. You can buy at the $2 shop. And what I'm going to do is just put some more in and see if I can darken this uh, paint paste up so I can get a more satisfying print when I run the next 
print through this plate. The nice thing is it really does not matter if you're mixing acrylic inks. You can just mix the different brands together. It's not going to make the world fall apart. And just use what you have. Don't worry about not having other colours or having them all in the same range. It's absolutely not necessary. Right, so I'm just going to spread this um, paint out. You can see quite a different colour. Uh, it's not quite the dark maroon red that's in the tube, this particular colour, but it's a bit darker than was there. I think I probably need a little bit more paint, not too much more. Let's see how we go. And I mean, you can see me wiping here. I've got a piece of um, quite nice Japanese paper actually underneath my printing plate. And the idea is, again, like my um, other pieces of uh, fabric, that if I want to, I can actually use that piece of paper in other projects. So again, always making sure that you're not throwing away ink unnecessarily this stuff's all expensive to buy or some of it is and there's absolutely no need to waste it now having done a lot with the novelty yarn i'm just going to reach over and grab a q-tip or a cotton bud whatever you uh, call it where you come from and i'm just going to make some meanders in the ink just using the end of the cotton bud and it can be anything I mean you could actually draw a, a, an image but I personally just like to have the abstracted meanders and again just an interesting line like a an extremely complicated riverbed but I just really like the way it looks and I think particularly for using this in another project so I might use it in a quilt or I might embroider on it I actually want something which is more abstract than I do representational if I wanted to I could actually do that again just getting rid of the excess ink off the end of the q-tip I think I used one of these to do about seven or eight different plates so we just keep taking the ink off when it gets a bit thick or the paint in this case you can just keep using that Q-tip or cotton bud until you finish drawing over the plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first piece that we printed, which is this piece, and I'm going to drop it over the top and take a print. So here we go. And again, you can immediately see again, you can immediately see that that wonderful color is now coming through quite nicely, and I just want to make sure that it's well smoothed over so that I'm getting the maximum absorption and that's actually another reason why I'm wearing gloves because you can probably see that the paint is coming through and if I just had my bare hands I would actually be covered in acrylic paint by now so let's just pull that back and there we have a really stunning meander pattern I'm really really happy with that and the other thing you see too is that the colors all mix in really interesting ways and if I really tried it would be rather hard for me to actually get this without uh, without a lot of planning so I'm quite happy to go with what comes off the plate on the day there's quite a bit of ink still on the plate I'm going to use again this is another piece of sheeting which I printed the other day just a plain yellow background and I'm going to put that on and see what goes to print I can get off this piece Now, because there's a lot less ink on here 
than there was previously paint I keep saying ink um, because there's a lot less paint on here than there was previously I don't expect to get quite as dramatic a print and certainly you can see because this is actually also a slightly thicker fabric that it's not coming through to the back of the fabric like it did on the thinner fabric let's see what we're getting oh we have got another really nice not quite as strong but again another really nice print which i think is fantastic and i'm really happy with that so in summary you can use any fabric preferably smooth to print on in a little while I'll show you another video where I'm printing onto a textured fabric and you'll see why I say pick the smoothest fabric you've got and remember it can be a poly cotton blend it doesn't have to be pure cotton or anything and it's a really good way of using up bits of fabric in your house that you might be able to use in a, an embroidery or a quilting project or a small sewing project but otherwise can't use. Thanks very much for being here. Just remember to like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you let your friends know that I'm here and producing videos. Thanks very much. Bye.